everyone, my name is Erin Halliard, Artistic Director of Pinchcut Opera. Look who I found! <laughs> this is Alex Omens, beloved of Pinchcut audiences. Uh, we most recently worked together on our spectacular performance uh, production of, Ham of Hamlet, of <laughs> Handel's Ronaldo at the end of last year, and we caught up briefly when it was snowing very lightly in very London lightly, in January. Mm. How are you, Alex? It's lovely to see you here in thank Sydney. Thank you. I'm very well, thank you. I'm uh, very happy to be here, always happy to be back in Sydney. Wonderful. And now I saw you just absolutely eat up the stage on Thursday <laughs> night in the opening of Cosi for mm -hmm. Opera Australia. And we'll get to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, since we saw each other in Ronaldo, what have you been up to? So working backwards, just before I came to Sydney, I was working on uh, the role and true love in the Regs Progress by Stravinsky, which is a world away from um, from the roles that I'm currently doing here and I have done here. It's such a, a an amazing virtuosic piece, and the character of Anne True Love is so complex. It's it was a, like for me on the on the personal ladder of roles, it was another level up because. The singing is is really virtuosic and and quite mighty above the orchestra, uh, and the story is is harrowing. The yeah. whole opera is just devastating. So it's one of my favourite operas. Oh, it's so beautiful. And where were you doing that? Alex? That was at the Grange Festival oh, in Hampshire. It was really lovely. So this is my second time working with the Grange. Last summer I did uh, Eurydice in Gluck's Orphée and Eurydice, oh. and I also did Belinda in their Dido. Great. Right. Uh, and then. Prior to that, I was doing some work at English National Opera, my last contract with ENO before um, I'm moving to Berlin. And uh, yeah, so I just tied up my uh, my time at ENO, and right. yeah, and then before that, it was Ronaldo. Of course, now Ronaldo, a mm. dear memory, dear Jake. Oh my oh. gosh, what a wonderful show! It was incredible. What were yeah. the highlights for you now that you look back on it? Oh gosh, so much. I mean, I think. I, I think I always praise you just like, well, while we're by ourselves, I always say it's so nice, the people that I've worked with in every pinch cut performance. The cast was incredible for this one. Um, Emma Pearson as Armida, yes. Jake, the wonderful Jake, who I, I loved working with so much. And also, you know, working with Louisa, it was a, a real pleasure to work with her. She's doing such incredible work across the world. And, um, Isn't she? Yeah. But no, my, my, my favourite things about Ronaldo were the cast uh, and also I think like the character itself. Yeah. I, it's, it's so rare mm. for me at this point. Well, I say rare, it kind of, I'm at a, like a turning point to play a real lover mm. um, whose love is pivotal in the opera going forward. Yeah. Like, you yes, know, the, know, the exactly opera doesn't mean. make sense without the real love between Almidena and Ronaldo. And so getting the chance to play yeah. that was such a pleasure. That was so remarkable. I, I know a lot of our audience really picked up on the wonderful chemistry you have with Jake. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of the reviews as well. It was yeah, something that was, was very much a discourse happening. And I've thought about this a lot. Jake and I have chatted about yeah. it post, you know, catching up over a, a pint in London. <laughs> yes. And... Um, I think that in opera, especially in Baroque opera, we expect audiences to believe in so much, like sorcerers and sorceresses, witches, wizards, creatures and dragons and spells battles. and whatever. Exactly, Crazy we expect battles. them to believe in so much. <laughs> But sometimes we take for granted that love is also something we need people to believe in. Exactly. Because it's... And it's the most relatable. It's, exactly. Mm. And I think in, in theatre, in film, in television, it's not so much a desire but an expectation mm. that chemistry be real between the lovers. And I think in opera, that also... I think it should be just mm. as important. And so having someone that I felt so comfortable with on the stage, he's a dear friend... Yes being able to just go that extra level and really make our love make sense so that we believe our hero yeah. would go off and rescue her. Likewise, it gave me the gumption to escape my situation in the opera. Yeah. So I just think that for me was a real, um, kind of like for my personal story career defining mm. because I felt that for the first time that I could really make love real for the audience, yes. for the story. I know exactly what you mean. It's so lovely to hear you articulate it. Because for me, my um, enduring memory of Ronaldo was actually La Chacchio Pianga. Yeah. Because 
so everyone remembers it. Everyone um, listeners, it. we know this. It's one of the most famous Baroque arias of all time, and I hear it a lot in auditions. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, not another Lasha Kyopianga. Yeah. But it's funny because in the context of the opera, yeah. it's extraordinary. Partly because there's no, if you remember, there's no um, opening orchestral introduction. It's just. And the character is, is sort of in torment mm -hmm. and. Um, is being held captive, yeah. uh, and then suddenly goes into this extraordinary. You sang it so Thank beautifully you. and purely, and it was because of the love you just described. Yeah, that that it also makes sense uh, in the opera, and I can see why it became so celebrated. I agree. I think I actually reflect, reflected on it in my stories on social media oh, during wonderful. the show, saying this op this aria is often done for me in concerts and recitals. But to do it in the context of the opera and to carry the character's emotional burden to get to that point, I personally had no other option but to be as fragile and delicate and like tragically broken by situation and circumstance. Uh, and it, it came forth that way, you know, in concerts I've done and so many singers do beautiful, wild, you know, well not too wild, within the scope of the very sad aria, but they do all sorts of beautiful ornaments and things. But for me, it felt most yeah. true to just let the, the, the weight of what she'd experienced come sort of crashing down on her. I think what we, what we both did at the time in mm. the context of that production was also we accented the, um, it says in the score, pianissimo, it's the mm. only aria in the whole thing. Yeah. It's, so we did this very soft, rather than all the ornaments as you say, yeah. it was very internal. It's so vulnerable. I think as well, I, on the stage, I was very, very close to the pit, which mm. I really appreciated. I was right on the, the sort of the center left lip and I was right near you and I've never felt so close yeah, to was, being was, a member of the orchestra yeah. ever in my life. Like mm. I felt like, a woodwind instrument playing with and I've also I don't think I've ever performed anything with such a quiet yeah we were so quiet like, ensemble yeah. it was beautiful yeah, it was yeah, magical very magical yeah um and so this is very exciting news Alex so mm -hmm. you've got a now a new life awaits you in Berlin tell us <gasps> yes. about that so I'm moving to Berlin literally this finishes um my this husband Freddie this is Cozy. Yeah, we'll talk about that my husband bit. Freddie has a concert in Melbourne the day after this finishes we fly back to Sydney the next day to London and the day after that to Berlin amazing and from that moment, it is go, go, go. So I'm joining the soloist ensemble uh, at Deutsche Oper Berlin. And I will be singing a whole host of roles, nine roles in so my first exciting. season, 12 roles in my second season. Um, and it's really just a chance to air a whole lot of new repertoire, um, get it under my belt and um, yeah, break into the European market a little bit. You've come so far. I'm so proud of you. Since we <laughs> both you. performed together when you were like 19. I was 19. Doing La Mont Jaloux. Mm -hmm. oh. No, it was Oh, it was even before that. It was oh, well, Of course it was Jazonic. Yeah. La Mont Jaloux is the recording that leaps out to me when I think of the young Alex. Oh my <laughs> it's gosh, so that, special. When you open Act 3 in that recording. Oh gosh, killer. I, I still listen to it. It's so beautiful. Mm. But so proud of you, Alex. And you Thank must be you. thrilled. I am. I'm really, really mm. thrilled. Very happy. I, I could never have foreseen that my career would go this way but I I know that if little Alex was looking at me now oh, so proud. she'd be so proud Absolutely. and I'm so proud of little Alex for getting here <laughs> now I saw you in Cozy last mm -hmm. Thursday and you're uh, thank you for taking some time off your oh, you're precious so day off to no, come and talk I'm to us to be here. so tell us about your OA debut it's an amazing production the David McVicker production and it is. you stole the stage as, thank as you. Despina thank you I love the character of Despina I think there are so many ways that you can perform her like maybe her more so than any other character in the opera you can yeah. you can take you can take so much pleasure in so many little moments with Despina. I personally think, and it's well reflected in the David McVicker production, she's very sassy. Yeah. She's, um, she's, she's, uh, but also a woman that's a little ahead of her time. And that's mm. definitely uh, evident in her relationship with the two girls. And she's close to them, but she's, re she's realistic and she's a bit ruthless. Um, I've loved working with Nardis Williams and Helen Sherman. Mm, mm. Um, our relationship, the three girls, has been so special yeah. in this uh, production. But yeah, Despina is, she's a joy to play as well because she's a secondary character. So the, 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 uh, the big numbers aren't hers, but she's pivotal mm. in the story moving forward. She's, she's very cheeky. Oh no, it's extraordinary. And tell me, is this, uh, 
Your relationship with Mozart, is this uh, your first major role in a Mozart, Mozart opera? Uh, one of. I've done, I did Pamina recently at ENO. Oh, great. Um, but I was mostly doing Papagena, and Papagena's, mm -hmm. you know, she's yeah. delightful and yeah. light. And again, in a similar way to Despina, brings a touch of comedy and yeah. lightheartedness to the opera that it has so many darker moments. Um, so, it, you know, Despina, in a similar way, I love the vitality and, and the charm that she brings yeah. to those those sort of darker or those more tender moments. But yeah, this is this is a bigger one for That's me, great. definitely. And um, I really loved it. What's it like singing in the Joan Sutherland Theatre at the Sydney Opera House? It's very special. <laughs> You've sung there before, right? I, Well, as a, as a, as a child. Chorus, I was in the yeah, children's yeah. chorus for La Boheme when I was 10 years old. Adorable. So this is 21 years later. Yeah, that's right. I'm making my main stage central not central role but you yeah. know like bigger role debut and yeah. it's um it's it's a big big deal i'm yeah. walking through the backstage also i'm familiar with it because i've performed in the concert hall on yeah. numerous occasions with sydney children's choir gondwana choirs um other with aco yeah. and um yeah so it's it's special to be back it's it's this opera for me has felt rather sort of than exhilarating it's felt like quite humbling to be in the building for the first time again little alex getting here yeah. it's a lovely feeling i know exactly how you feel because i had my conducting debut at the opera house in the Joan Sutherland Theatre earlier yeah. this year with Theodora. Yeah, of course. And it was only when I got there, I sort of the import and the, the, the weight of tradition and, yes. and all the things that we associate, you, you and I both yeah. being, um, uh, you know, in Sydney and the Sydney Opera House is so central iconic. to our lives. Yeah, mm. really iconic. Yeah. Speaking about iconic, <laughs> so you are married to a I very am. famous opera singer. I Tell am. us about Freddie. So Freddie de Tommaso, my husband, uh, we met at university. We studied together at the Royal Academy of Music. Um, we were married last year in September. He is doing exceptionally well. He is just the most amazing singer. And I, I don't feel any bias in saying that. I really, <laughs> really don't. Like, he is utterly... Uh, magnificent he is coming out to australia he mm. literally arrives tomorrow night oh great i'm so excited yes um so he arrives tomorrow night he has a concert at the sydney opera house mm -hmm. on the 11th and a concert at the melbourne recital center on the 18th and yeah he's bringing his two albums with decca classics to australia Amazing. um his first album is neapolitan songs and his second album is sort of really beautiful opera favorites yeah. puccini verdi um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah i was listening and to them some so the other well. day and it's a really extraordinary voice yeah oh it's amazing yeah. he yeah. he just sang uh, in Greece at the arena there. He sang in Verona at Amazing. the Arena di Verona this summer. He um, He's done, I think, four new roles this year, which is big for him because mm. his repertoire is very dramatic tenor repertoire. And so he has sort of your Bohems, your um, Cavaradossi in Tosca, Pinkerton, um, and, and he's recently added Baluin Maschera, Norma, and two others I can't remember, Amazing. but yeah, he's doing extremely well. Yeah. Yeah. And so how is life to two great opera singers <laughs> in one household? Are you, do you see each other a lot? No, no, we don't. But you know what? That's the thing with this job. It wouldn't matter who I had found in life to be my partner. We, were, we would always do months and months apart. Freddie and I have been married for something like 310 days and we've seen each other 62 days. <laughs> But that's the nature of this job, and, yes. and and you know I, I, the beauty is we've that's been our relationship the whole way through. Yeah. We we started dating when just before COVID, and he was traveling even during COVID. He was able mm -hmm. to perform in a lot of European houses that different had different COVID restrictions, right. and then the rest of his career and my career we've spent a lot of time apart, but. Nonetheless, we feel very connected because we very much understand the ups and downs that we yes. are going through. And, and I feel very connected to him. We, we talk on the phone, we message one another, and we're right. very present even though we're not yes. in the room. And I think that, you know, I, I look up to a lot of operatic couples who've made their relationship work. And yeah. 
yeah, I, I feel so supported by him. And, yeah. Does he ever give you notes after performance? Or do you, do you ever know, give him notes? Well, do you know what? <laughs> he is actually my teacher and has been oh, for the last amazing. four years. Yeah, great. So he became my teacher, I guess, part of the way through COVID. And he addressed a lot of things in my singing that I desperately wanted someone to to help me understand my mm. support and my breathing mm. being being central to that. I never really felt that I had the stamina and he he sort of maneuvered a few things and taught me so much. And now, um, yeah, now I check in with him via Zoom sometimes, Brilliant. but always when I see him, we'll have a little yeah. sing. And it's, again, it's another thing that I think brings us very, very close as an operatic couple, because it's very hard to allow, and I know this from other friends talking about it, it's very hard to allow your partner who knows such a, a private, intimate side mm. of you, to also know that intimate side of your singing where yes. you make ugly sounds and you you get it wrong and you crack or you, yeah. you know, it's very, it's very freeing once you get through that to have that in your relationship. And I do note him sometimes. You know, I sit in the room. He'll <laughs> he'll when I'm at home with him, he'll say, "Ali, come in and and yeah. sit and listen," and I'll say, "Oh, you know, this vowel or that," and whether it whether it matters or not, it's just such a lovely thing to share yeah. that, um, yeah, that, that connection. That's amazing, Alex. Mm. Well, it's so wonderful to see you. Thank and you. And it's so nice to see you too. For everything you've, that has happened since we did Ronaldo. And yeah. um, I hope that the rest of the run of Cosi goes well. Thank and that your you. move to Berlin goes beautifully. <gasps> oh, cross your fingers for me. My first opera is um, Carmen as Frasquita. And oh, they've, yes. they've sent me the, the archival footage to yeah. learn because I've got like four days. Yeah, wow. Four days of rehearsals until opening night. It's for me. <laughs> in German? It's in French. In French, So course. most of the operas that we'll do at DOB yeah, are, are in the original languages. Oh, I am doing Vixen in my first season, and I've done two different productions of Vixen mm. in two different English translations, oh, and now I'm doing it worst. in German. Okay. Not doing it in Czech yet. I'm doing it <laughs> in German. That would probably be easiest, because you can just jettison the English. Exactly, just out of the way. Yeah, no, but I'm very, very excited. It's a huge, huge next step in the game. So exciting, and I know you'll just um, eat up every challenge that comes your way. Alex Oman, so lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, and you, Erin. You're very welcome.